Hello, this is Christopher Stevens from New Zealand, and this is another video of my exploits on the Reddit Hardcore Minecraft server. It's been another two months, and I'm still alive, and I've been building quite thoroughly this time. Um, so this video, like the last one, is going to be a tour of the things I've made, as well as a history of what's been going on on the server. Uh, to start off, I'll just say that I was not originally in this location, which you will probably figure out rather quickly once I leave this lovely little forest biome with a starry night sky. But, uh, as I was saying, um, I originally started off on an island in the minus minus quadrant right up against the edge of the world. It was a fairly sizable one. Um, it was quite nice. And I built up my inn in less than a day, or maybe one day, and started a sheep farm, lots of different colours, and all was well. Then after about a week, while I was offline, the inn was attacked. Then when I got on, repaired it, the guy came back. That resulted in a, an hour-long duel. Um, the person I was building with at the time, Tame Hunter, uh, what he had done was suck basically cut the island in half to make his own side of the island with a bridge. So basically what happened when this guy, Calumnus, attacked me uh, was that we were fighting back and forth across the bridge and he was obviously using lava buckets because I was trying to repair my stuff at the same time he was attacking. In any case, uh, after about an hour of back and forth I started breaking his armour and he ran away. He put a massive bounty on me, or at least a massive bounty at the time, and promptly died, probably gathering more diamonds uh, to build more, to make more armor, since he burned to death in lava. So I rebuilt the stuff, rebuilt everything, got attacked the next day by the own, who experienced some degree of infamy in the first half of the month, or first month rather until he just mysteriously disappeared. Um, after basically escaping with most of my stuff, because I had already begun shipping it out um, after the first attack, got attacked again the following day. Um, so I basically disassembled the inn in its entirety, put it into chests, and then shipped it across the map one inventory at a time. And then established this wonderful base. Well, you'll have to take me at my word at this point, because I am just jumping on top of trees. In any case, uh, after that, along with Tamehana and Socrates, we hunted down the own and killed him, along with four of his friends who were trying to rescue him from a lava trap. And, I mean, that didn't really remove the danger because of the donation system, so he was immediately back. So, it's very hard to keep somebody dead these days, unless they're just really shit. And Theon, despite being a douchebag, was playing legitimately and can PvP fairly well, so I didn't want to try and deal with him again on my own. But hey, like I said, he did mysteriously disappeared. But enough ruminating on the past, let's go have a look. This first room, as you can see, is a small pine forest under a starry night. This is the best I can do for a biome. Those little shrub shrubs you can get in the desert and around the place, um, they refuse to... Well, you can't use silk touch, so I can't move them. So, over here, we have the inn. And the sound is now back on for a reason. So, I'll just do a tour of the biomes first. So here, we have a desert biome with something like 60, 70 gold, plus all of that glowstone up there. This really, really freaks me out sometimes, because the mobs, when they spawn, just walk straight into those, and it's very disconcerting to hear something dying horribly. 
By the way, I actually came up with a use for beech trees. If you can't guess it, I'll tell you what it is after this tour. So over here, we have a mushroom biome. In this case, silk touch can be used to get the mycelium blocks or whatever they're called. Aha, the game's up. There's the pigmen. <laughs> This space is in the nether. The use for the beech trees is that the nether seems to count as a desert biome. So what happens is normal oak trees look rather shit, whereas the beech trees retain their colour. wonder what the jungles will look like. Um, so we're only two days away from the map reset, but uh, I'm hoping that we actually hold out... 1.2 so we can get the jungles and ocelots and cocoa beans and all that but uh, yeah that is all nether brick oh fuck this is the reason this is the one downside of living in the nether well there's two downsides Downside number one is ghasts. Downside number two is lack of water, though there is a glitch which I found out about recently which means I can get infinite water from cauldrons. This is my end biome with two obsidian towers and all this end stone. And black wool for the sky. Shut up! This is my farm. Um, some things like melons and pumpkins are very difficult to grow. Sugarcane won't grow at all. But I can grow wheat. And all of this nether wart. Basically, there's more nether wart here. Like, you, if you harvested that, that's probably more nether wart than would ever be used in potions on the server for the entire month. As it stands, it's like a thousand if you harvested it all up. I considered breaking some people's stranglehold on the nether wart trade, but that would just result in shitloads of people with potions, which just makes the server more dangerous. I mean, I, I think it's better putting up with, um... Are all the nether fortresses raided? Than people throwing harm potions at you. And the nether fortresses aren't raided! You're just lazy! In fact, I live under a nether fortress that's not raided, beside another nether fortress that isn't raided, and surrounded by another six nether fortresses that aren't raided. Granted, I am 2,000 blocks out, but it's not that difficult. This is my wonderful netherrack storage room. All netherrack. Which is only a tiny fraction of what's been excavated for this giant hole. I suppose we should go upstairs and take a look from above. Shut up! Isn't that awesome? So yeah, I have stealthily taken all of this nether brick from nether fortresses by basically removing entire sections of it, then blocking them back up again as though they were never there or alternatively digging out the underside of the pathways because they the um, long paths in the nether fortresses um, what they do is they arch underneath so even if they're going through solid rock they'll have little, little brick arches underneath them that general direction is my general exit tunnel. I had to remove my link to the surface, my direct link, because my um, mining 
operation was discovered, which had a portal near it. So, yeah, it's quite aggravating getting back and forth and getting materials back here, but it keeps the place safe. One interesting feature of the World Guard on the server is that if you go past 1250, which would correspond to the map limits of 10,000, um, and make a nether portal, it will teleport you straight back to spawn. So that's my directly to spawn access tunnel. One way trip. So yeah, the, the characteristic inn that I keep building like a crazy person is bigger again. It's a nice big kitchen. Oh yes. Yes! My fridge. There's not really much in the way that's different compared to the last one, so it's all the same stuff again. It's kind of just like a standard thing that I do before I move on to build something else. I guess one upside of living in the nether is that I actually have tenants. So the pigmen enjoy the finest in four poster beds. Once again, enchanting and potions. Up until now I've been basically filling these up with a bucket each time I leave the place and come back. But uh, assuming it stays, the glitch to get infinite water from cauldrons will actually make living in the nether slightly easier. Or at least I can keep brewing the damn potions. For the final part of this base, well, second to final part, this is my little plantation, which seems to be missing two trees. That's peculiar. Um, so I've got a nice sun up there and a nice blue sky. And fuck the beech trees, I'm not going to harvest them. And this is what I've been working on, my final project. I just take note of the ridiculous quantities of gold, of lapis, of everything, because I'm clearly insane. Oh, I bet the ghasts in here. Or not. Yes, this is the giant me shrine, complete with 130 diamond blocks just to make my hair and eyebrows. Due to a lack of creativity, I just created a tessellating pattern on the ceiling. These giant crossed tools. So, spade, axe. Pose. Pickaxes unfortunately don't cross very well. And where would I be without my shears and bows? Worship me. And I just stuck the two pieces of bedrock that I filched um, from somebody. I think GMX dropped them near the admit near near Mike once, and Mike gave them to me. The colour scheme is a bit different. In Classic, you actually had a lavender coloured block of wool, kind of similar to this. So I've just ended up making my statue mostly on a kind of blue scale. Damn straight. And I do not want to forget to put this stuff back on is also these crossed swords on the ground. Unfortunately there's no observation platform in here. Ow. So 
So yeah, there's like more than well over a thousand diamonds just up there. Just fucking ridiculous quantities of lapis. I think there's like two thousand in this basal lap. Heaps of iron. Obviously heaps of wool. The wool was possibly more annoying than some of the other materials. It came initially out of my grinder, which was attached to the base that I had to disconnect from here, since it got discovered. And from raiding sheep, which... Uh, raiding sheep. It's going to be a lot easier from now on building statues and all that because I basically can get an infinite supply of wool fairly quickly. So if you just have two sheep, you can just start inbreeding endlessly and they'll regrow their wool. So life will be easier. Obviously I'll try and build on the surface again. At least to start off with. But I'm not quite sure what I'll do to top this one. Because, I mean, I like it, but it's not my usual style. You know, nice quaint housing. In this case it's just giant ostentatious self-promotion. To continue this video, um, I shall go have a look around the map. I'd show you all of the statues I'd made, but um, the two best ones I've ever made, I think, for random 902 and Devil on Alpha got trashed by some douchebag. There's still the Giggles and Pie holding the Dragon Egg, Captain Crimson holding a sword, um, Helpless Old Lady holding a giant melon. I think that was it, actually. For the next map, McFluffykins is up for a statue. Um, I'll show you why. Yeah. So, McFluffykins is getting a statue with a big diamond over his head for being... Well, quite frankly, a ridiculous bounty. Yeah, that's what I've been up to. Just ridiculous, ridiculous work. Right, part two.